Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is Tony Broom Ministry, welcoming you for this Bible teaching session from the book of Ezekiel. Scriptures are taken from chapters 3 and 18. The title is Moral Responsibility Demanded. God demands that we walk in holiness. And even in the New Covenant, followers of Jesus Christ are responsible to walk in holiness. We have responsibility in our generation that we're living. We're certainly not teaching a lot of responsibility, but we are responsible for our actions. We cannot blame what we do on someone else. We have to take Responsibility for things ourselves. Here's our golden text. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 32. I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. Choose what's right. Do what's right. God, as it were, is saying, I see all the devastation. I see all of the destruction. I see all of the things that are taking place in your world. I see all of your heartache and heartbreak. I see all the sin. I see all of the killing. All the violence. But it's not my fault. I have no pleasure in the death of him who dies. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. Live. Several times in the book of Ezekiel, we find the expression live. I saw you polluted in your blood. As I passed by, I said to you, when you were in your blood, live. Yea, I said unto you, when you were in your blood, live. If you have a physical condition today that is keeping you from enjoying life, is keeping you from your health, maybe a blood disorder, maybe something that has gone into the muscles, I say on the authority of God's Word, live. In Jesus' name, live. Disease, die, and you live. The authority of God's Word. The book of Ezekiel has several chapters, including these two. Ezekiel chapter 3 and Ezekiel chapter 18, where God lays down the principle of righteousness and wickedness. And it goes on and on and on, really. And in principle, he's teaching. I'm warning the wicked from their way. If the wicked man is not warned of his way and he dies in his wickedness, his wickedness, his sin will be required of him, but also his blood will I require at your hand because you have not warned the wicked from his way. If you warn him, even if he dies, You have delivered your soul even though he'll die in his sin. Perhaps you warn him and he comes to his senses. He comes to God. He gets right with God. Not only have you delivered your soul, but he has been delivered from his wickedness. This time we're going to let the scripture preach and teach this lesson. We are going to let God's word teach his own lesson. After all, his words are a whole lot better than mine. My voice may be the voice that you hear on the YouTube channel, on the ministry podcast channel, but it's God's Word that really speaks to our heart. Warning of impending doom. Judgment is coming. God is warning His people Israel, and He's certainly warning America today. Now here's chapter 3, beginning at verse 16. And like I say, we'll let the Bible teach its own self. We're going to let the Bible preach us a disciple lesson today. And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, And thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, 
but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, or from the wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness, and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned. Also thou hast delivered thy soul. And the hand of the Lord was there upon me, and he said unto me, Arise, go forth into the plain, and I will there talk with thee. Then I rose and went forth into the plain. And behold, the glory of the Lord stood there, as the glory which I saw by the river of Kibar, and I fell upon my face. Then the Spirit entered into me, and set me upon my feet, and spake with me, and said unto me, Go, shut thyself within thine house. But thou, O son of man, behold, they shall put bands upon thee, and shall bind thee with them, and thou shalt not go out among them. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth, that thou shalt be dumb, and shalt not be to them a reprover, for they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with thee, I will open thy mouth, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, He that heareth, let him hear, and he that forbeareth, let him forbear, for they are a rebellious house. Impending doom. God says, I want you to warn the righteous that he do not turn from his righteousness. If the righteous man, and the principle here is fair. God is a fair, more than fair and just God. And some people will say that just because this is in the old covenant, they do away with the principle altogether. They say that just because this is in the old covenant, it does away with someone who would turn from God back into sin. They say that's not possible because of the new covenant. The principle of God's word is still true, whether you're talking about the new covenant or the old covenant. We may not be under the dispensation of law anymore. And if you're in grace, you're not under law anyway. You're in grace. But if you have not been to Jesus for the cleansing power, if you have not been washed in the blood of the Lamb, you're still under the law. Even though you're living in dispensation of grace, you're still under the law. You're still under the curse because you have not come to Christ who has redeemed you from the curse. So this principle is laid out. If the wicked die in his wickedness, if you have warned him, you've delivered your soul, even though he dies. If you warn him and he turns, praise God, he lives. If you do not warn him, and he dies in his sin. Not only does he die in sin, but his blood will be required at your hand. And he tells the prophet, I want you to lay my word out before them. And they will put bands on you. They will tie you up. They will bind you and try to do everything they can to discourage you from bringing my message to them. Because they are a rebellious house. I will even make you dumb. It will be like you don't have anything to say. And they'll poke fun at you because of that. Look at him. He's not saying anything. He has nothing to say. God said, I'm doing that because of the seriousness of the hour. I want you to be able to speak to them my word. I don't want you to get frustrated. I don't want you to tell them what you think. I want you to speak my word to them. Lay it out. When the righteous turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, he dies in his sin. All of his righteousness will not be mentioned again. All of his righteousness will not be remembered because he has voided it. He has violated it. He's turned 
again into the sins of the world. And this speaks to the people that we're living in now, the generation. They think that just because they have come to Jesus years ago, they used to go to church, used to do this and that, they think they can live any way they want to now, and it doesn't apply to the situation. It doesn't bother their life now. They even have a teaching out that compartmentalizes life and says that this is my church part of life. And over here on the other side is my pleasure part of life. I have a life during the week that's for me, and I have a life on Sunday that's for the Lord. Well, that doesn't fly in the kingdom of God. You don't have but one life. You're not a catch. You don't have nine lives. And you're not reincarnated. You don't have two lives. You have one life. Only one life it will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. We only have one life. And what we do for Jesus is important. Sowing and reaping. Whatsoever a man sows, that will he also reap. And so God tells Ezekiel, I want you to lay my word before them because there's doom coming. I'm warning the house of Israel and America, my beloved, has been warned over and over. Now, let's look at principle of individual responsibility, not only as a nation, not only as a church body. And by the way, the Scripture says in the New Testament, 1 Peter, judgment must begin at the house of God. If judgment begins at us, just think of where the sinner and the ungodly will appear. If the righteous scarcely be saved, then where will the ones who are without God, the sinner, what kind of shape do you think they'll be in? It'll be a pitiful day, a day of reckoning. So not only is there national and corporate responsibility, but there's individual responsibility. And this is chapter 18, verse 1. The word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, What mean ye that ye use this proverb concerning the land of Israel, saying, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge? As I live, saith the Lord God, you shall not have occasion any more to use this proverb in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. God says you have a personal responsibility for what you do. You cannot say the fathers have eaten a sour grape and the children's teeth are set on edge. What passes on from the father to the son? He can't help it. He's just doing what his fathers does and have done. So he has no responsibility. He's just carrying on a family tradition, as the song said. He can't help it. God said, every soul is mine. The soul of the father, the soul of the son. The soul who sins they shall die. Every man will face the responsibility of what he's done for his own self. But if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right and hath not eaten upon the mountains. Now you'll find these things mentioned over and over again in this chapter. He lays out their sins. He said if the just man is doing that which is lawful and right, he has not eaten upon the mountains, neither hath lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, neither hath defiled his neighbor's wife, neither hath come near to a menstruous woman. See, God cares about what we do, how we conduct our life. We're living in this culture thing now to where people say it doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't matter what you wear, it doesn't matter how you dress, it doesn't matter how you go. God cares about everything we do. And it's not that he's a 98-year-old, gray-headed, granddaddy God sitting in the rocking chair in the sky ready to throw boulders down on you. God wants to save us. He wants to love us. He wants to bless us. 
He wants to prosper us. He wants us to do well. He wants us to do good. He wants good things to happen to us. God is a good God. But He cares about how we live. He cares about how we conduct our life. He goes on. And hath not oppressed any, but hath restored to the debtor his pledge, hath spoiled none by violence, hath given his bread to the hungry, hath covered the naked with a garment. He that hath not given forth upon usury, neither hath taken any increase, that hath withdrawn his hand from iniquity, hath executed true judgment between man and man. And he lays these things out. God said you've got to be someone who, it's all right to have business, it's all right to make money in the right way, but you cannot extort, you cannot go over on your brother, you cannot rob or defraud your brother. Hath walked in my statutes and hath kept my judgments to deal truly, he is just. He shall surely live, saith the Lord God. If he beget a son, now we're talking about the father and we're talking about the son. If he begets a son that is a robber, a shedder of blood, and that doeth the like to any one of these things, and that doeth not any of those duties, but even hath eaten upon the mountains and defiled his neighbor's wife, hath oppressed the poor and needy, hath spoiled by violence, hath not restored the pledge, and hath lifted up his eyes to the idols, hath committed abomination, hath given forth upon usury, and hath taken increase. Shall he then live? He shall not live. He hath done all these abominations. He shall surely die. His blood shall be upon him. God said, you can't let a man do all these things and just sweep him on into heaven. He's done all these abominations. He will surely die. Now, lo, if he beget a son, let's take another example, God says. Suppose he begets a son that sees all his father's sins which he hath done, and considereth and doeth not such like, that hath not eaten upon the mountains, neither hath lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, hath not defiled his neighbor's wife, neither hath oppressed any, hath not withholden the pledge, hath not spoiled by violence, but hath given his bread to the hungry, and hath covered the naked with a garment, that hath taken off his hand from the poor, that hath not received usury nor increase, hath executed my judgments, hath walked in my statutes, he shall not die for the iniquity of his father, he shall surely live. As for his father, because he cruelly oppressed, spoiled his brother by violence, and did that which is not good among his people, lo, even he shall die in his iniquity. God is saying you're getting what's coming to you. You're doing it to yourself. We cannot blame our fathers, and the father cannot blame the children. America is making choices just like Israel did. We cannot blame our ancestors. If anything, we need to go back and see what they did to have the blessings of God upon them. That's what we can do. We can go back and learn from them. Instead of being so stubborn and hard-headed like the house of Israel was, we need to learn. Faith of our fathers. Truly, faith. We can learn from the faith of our fathers. We can learn from the patriotism that they had, the pioneer spirit that they exhibited. Now let's look at the Lord is just. This is continuing in chapter 18. And we, again, going to just let the Bible teach this session. This time, starting at verse 19. Yet say ye, why? Doth not the Son bear the iniquity of the Father? When the Son hath done that which is lawful and right, and hath kept all my statutes, and hath done them, he shall surely live. The soul that sinneth it shall die. And God reiterates again. He said, I want you to understand. I'm not punishing one for the other. And I'm not justifying one for the other. Every man stands for himself. 
The soul that sins, it shall die. The Son shall not bear the iniquity of the Father, neither shall the Father bear the iniquity of the Son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned to him. In his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? God said, what kind of God do you think I am? Do you think I have pleasure in seeing the wicked die? God is even hurt when a sparrow falls from the sky. God said, I have no pleasure in the death of him who dies. I want you to live. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and doeth according to all the abomination that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? You think I'm just going to pass him off scot-free and let him live? All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned. In his trespass that he hath trespassed, and in his sin that he hath sinned, in them shall he die. Yet ye say, The way of the Lord is not equal. Hear now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal? Are not your ways unequal? When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness, and committeth iniquity, and dieth in them, for his iniquity that he hath done shall he die. God said, just think about it. Just use your noodle. Just good old spiritual horse sense. When a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits sin, not just making a mistake, not just sinning and coming short. I'm talking about practicing living in sin. When a righteous man turns his back on God and lives in sin, God said, do you think He's just going to live? Do you think that he's going to be justified? No, God says, and he commits these iniquities and dies in them for his iniquity that he hath done shall he die. Again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive because He considereth and turneth away from all his transgressions that he hath committed. He shall surely live. He shall not die. He says, I don't want to do what my father did. I don't want to do what the house of Israel did. And this is what America needs to do right now today. We need to learn the lessons. We need to say, I don't want to make the mistakes that my forefathers have made. I don't want to make the mistakes, the tragic choices that the house of Israel made. I don't want to do that. I don't want to live in drunkenness like my grandfather, like my father did. I don't want to live that kind of life. And you know what? You don't have to. There's not a devil who's going to hell that has the power to make you do it. You're not no Flip Wilson. The devil doesn't make you do it. You have a choice. And if you don't want to do it, God will give you the power to be victorious over the evil one. Yet saith the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? God said, your ways are the ones that's not right, not mine. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent. And turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. God said, I'll give you the power to get right with God if you want to. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. This is just plain to me. The Bible has a way of saying it so much better than I. 
where the principle is taught in the book of the Revelation in the end of the Bible really says the same thing. Jesus said, Behold, I come quickly and I will give every man according as his work shall be. You're not saved by works, but you're judged by works. You're rewarded by works. You're rewarded for your works. If we do that which is good and right, we stand before God in the Christian judgment. Paul said we will receive a reward for the deeds done in our body, whether it be good, whether it be bad. And the sinner man, he stands before God at the white throne judgment. The book of the Revelation, chapter 20, verses 11 through 15. They stand before God. The dead, small and great, stood before God. Death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they stood before God. The books were open. They were judged according to those things written in the books. Another book is open, which is the book of life. They were shown their name was not written in the book of life. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast alive into a lake of fire. There is a real heaven, a holy city, the new Jerusalem. It has streets of gold, gates of pearl, and walls of jasper. Most of all, Jesus and our loved ones are there. And there's also another place called the Lake of Fire. It's hot down there. It's a place that nobody wants to be. A place that was prepared for the devil and his angels. Now, Ezekiel didn't talk about hell, but he certainly was referring to it in principle. A righteous man. He turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity and lives in sin and he dies in that condition. Whatever condition you die in, that's it. When you lay down, whichever way you lay down, that's it. If you lay down right, you'll get up right. If you lay down wrong, you'll get up wrong. If you lay down in Christ, you go to sleep, to sleep no more. You'll wake up to sleep no more as the inspiration is sung. But if you don't die in Christ, you'll die outside of Christ. And if you die outside of Christ, it's what the Bible calls a second death. Nobody needs to go to that place. We all have a moral responsibility and God demands moral responsibility is demanded. As Jesus followers, we are responsible to walk in holiness. And those who are not right with God need to come to Him and be saved. I have no pleasure in the death of Him who dies, says the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. God is calling you to turn, to get right with God, and to live. The Spirit is bearing witness today. There are several times lately in church where in our particular situation, our lead pastor has called for the invitation and he has asked people to respond. They have lifted their hand, but they haven't come forward. They haven't responded. There's something will cause you to lift your hand, but there's something else that causes you not to respond. If you're going to lift your hand and acknowledge your need for Christ, why don't you get right with God now? What is keeping you? Is that fox on the side? Is she really that good? I mean, Phyllis Diller wasn't that good. Is she really that hot? What about that stud you got? He ain't that hot, is he? What about all that money you got? It's not that good, is it? What about that hit you're hitting? That drug you're drinking, that drink you're drinking. It's not that hard, is it? Not that strong, is it? Not that good, is it? God is calling us to come and repent and to get right with Him. Moral responsibility is demanded. Father in heaven, take these words from the voice of your prophet Ezekiel. Chapters 3 and chapter 18, use them for the glory of God and the good of our souls. We'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Moral Responsibility Demanded is a teaching session produced by Tony Broom Ministries.